Hi, good afternoon. My name is Fernando. I'm from the uh, Shabo Engineering Club. And this is uh, Mr. Alexander from uh, our physics department and physics professor. So nice, nice to have you here. Mr. Pleasure, Mr. pleasure. Yeah. So um, everybody here at Shabo knows you only as a professor, a physics professor, yeah. right? But everybody also like uh, had a really curiosity about you. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you came from? Uh, why why is here? Yeah. I was doing something else, right? Right. So my first question is, uh, what inspired you to go to, to physics or then not math, not yeah. chemistry? And Very good question. Uh, I started out as a psychology major, which was actually uh, in some ways close to physics in the uh, uh, esoteric directions that both subjects can take you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's new age psychology and there's uh, things uh, that interface psychology with spiritualism and uh, philosophy, which is also true for physics. Uh, physics can be very philosophical, especially in the more abstract realms, such as quantum mechanics and uh, uh, other uh, abstract areas of the uh, subject that lead to uh, sort of speculative types of uh, questions that one has about our knowledge. So, for example, in quantum mechanics, uh, the theory of measurement is modified from our everyday experience because uh, atoms are so small that the act of measuring them uh, disturbs them. And so there's an uncertainty in defining the state of an atom because the act of measurement disturbs that state. There are similar questions in psychology that involve uh, existence and what defines knowledge uh, and that kind of a thing. So probably I was attracted to physics because of the interesting abstract nature of the subject. But my first major after psychology was pre-med. Pre and with pre-med, you know, you get the opportunity to take the math and the physics and that kind of thing, uh, which is a foundation for the subject that I'm in. Um, then it switched from pre-med after psychology to engineering. So I did a double major at UC Berkeley, which was the engineering science program, which is still thriving, that allows students in physics to take core engineering courses uh, with a certain specialization. So uh, there's uh, physics with an emphasis on nuclear energy, there's physics with an emphasis on electrical engineering, and I believe there was physics with an emphasis on material science. I chose uh, the engineering science program that combined uh, physics with uh, electrical engineering because at that point I wanted some practical experience that allowed me to uh, see how physics could, first of all, give me a job, you know, and electrical engineering at that time was more employable than it is now. That was way before the dot-com. Uh, so I took, you know, the interesting uh, upper division courses in quantum mechanics, in mechanics, celestial mechanics, as well as uh, specialization courses in electrical engineering such as propagation along waveguides and circuit classes. Uh, the problem with that major is that you kind of end up with a little bit of everything and not enough to come out of the major with uh, enough specializing uh, information to get an immediate job. So, you're not as uh, specialized as an electrical engineering major because you haven't taken as many courses in electrical engineering which were filled by the physics courses. Um, so I went on to graduate work in physics where I felt that I could combine my electrical engineering um, work with the physics knowledge to involve myself in an experimental project uh, at whatever institution I was accepted at. I, you know, eventually was accepted to Stanford, and so the electrical engineering played some role in my uh,
graduate degree, but not a lot. There was a lot of information that I used, for example, uh, from uh, the electrical engineering courses involving uh, reflection and transmission that was useful in my uh, specialization at Stanford, which was uh, looking at the electromagnetic properties of inhomogeneous medium. That is uh, the reflective and transmission properties of media that was uh, made up of small particles of metal suspended in a dielectric. You know, they're like little small metal balls that are in a matrix of a dielectric, a non-conducting uh, material. And what we did was looked at the reflective and absorptive uh, properties of these metals that, uh, and the matrix that they're in that have uh, applications for you could say selective detection of certain kinds of radiation. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is that the electrical engineering was helpful in uh, the area of specialization that occurred in graduate school that did take some of the engineering principles uh, that I learned and put them to work uh, to uh, complete the research that I did. Pretty interesting, pretty amazing. Yeah, thank you very much and for these questions. <laughs> what kind of difficulties do you, you find in the way to Stanford? Like any big friends saying, I was saying, oh, this is useless, or like a really long distance related. So, no, this is useless too. So, what are doing? What, what are doing psychology? Well, uh, you know, there was a time where I some people said, you know, why are you going into physics? It's such a difficult subject. And I said, yes, it is a difficult subject. You know, even for the Nobel laureates, they will admit that it's a very difficult subject. Depending on the problem that you want to attack, uh, the limit uh, to uh, difficulty is, is not there. I mean, it can be as difficult as the problem that you want to uh, approach in the field that you want to go into. Uh, so, yeah, there were a few people who said, why are you going to, into something like that, especially when we don't see the everyday applications of physics compared to engineering. Mm -hmm. And I told them, well, I'm going to try to specialize in something that is somewhat practical, but also gives, uh, you know, uh, some satisfaction about the fundamental nature of reality, which I've always been interested in. Mm -hmm. So, um, my answer was, I'm very curious as a person, so I like physics to answer fundamental questions about cosmology or atoms or fields that explain everything around us. And at the same time, it would be nice to see how physics can be applied to something positive. So that's how I answered them, that uh, physics is not as abstract as you think if it is applied. And it was in my research. Mm -hmm. and what kind of uh, support did you have? Okay, at the time that I entered uh, my undergraduate, uh, you know, I didn't have too many problems in terms of financial support because uh, I worked part time and uh, I was able to support myself through school. But at the same time, uh, school when I was going at the, that time was not as expensive as it is now. The unit. Uh, cost was uh, considerably lower than it is now. Uh, so financially it wasn't that big of a problem. Uh, later on when I became a graduate student the financial support was pretty much guaranteed by the fellowships that the graduate students were offered uh, in exchange for their work as teaching assistants. So I was a teaching assistant in 